Are you ready? I'm ready. I think it's going to be a long one. On. It is going to be a long one. It's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> Might be that too. <laughs> it's going to create a mess is what it's going to do. I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Your uh, table all full of little green hairs. Oh, everywhere. Yeah, I got them all over my clothes. And I wore light colored pants today, too. So, well, well, welcome everybody to the monthly tie off. Mr. Flagler is fresh from our back from Argentina. You can tell by his tan. Wonderful trip. Yeah, hosted Great trip time. for Golden Dorado and Trout. Yep. Trophy Brook Trout, which was really cool. Wow. Some Gigundo rainbows that look like steelhead. Wow. That was cool. A uh, Paku, which I'd never seen before. Cool fish. Uh -huh. Fruit eaters. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Those look, yeah. those look pretty cool. Did you catch yeah. some of those on dry flies? I, oh. I, I know um, uh, the guy I was with uh, then caught caught one, but on a streamer, uh, they usually mm -hmm. do eat fruit like mulberries, like carp will mm -hmm. eat. Um, mm -hmm. But he got one on a streamer, and I tell you what, wow. it, it had an eight weight, absolutely bent triple, uh, really wow. tough, tough fish. Uh, the Golden Dorado were tough, but man, Paku just go down and grind it out. Weird looking fish, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look they look interesting. I, I think I'd go down just to catch them. Yeah. Well, looks like we got lots of people in from Germany and Pennsylvania and Omaha and uh, Ed's got oh Ed's got company today, but he's going to watch us on the replay. We'll miss you, Ed. <sighs> Bummer. Roger People Bird's asking, here, of course. Roger Bird's here. People are asking here. about the beard. Beard kind of came off April one, so no, no beard for me. Now that will that will that stay off until the fall? That will go back starting April, uh, October first mm -hmm. to April one every year. Set your calendar. Okay, I'll set my calendar. Okay. Well, we better get tying because this is going to take a while. Yeah, this right? is this is like what an hour and a half to get through one of them. <laughs> oh, well, tell people, tell people, <laughs> Tim, about the green machine. Tell tell them why you why you picked this weird fly. Oh, why, why we're tying? Why we're tying a green machine? Because uh, the green machine is kind of, uh, as far as I understand it, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Here is is a fairly traditional. Uh, Canadian maritime Atlantic salmon fly works for other things as well. Uh, sea run, sea run trout, but it's, I think there's some confusion because of the deer hair body. It's kind of a, a bug that a lot of people describe it even as a wet fly, but it's a fly that, that is meant to go kind of in the water surface, not really float, uh, on top. And it's meant to be swung, maybe make a little wake behind it. The only time I've ever used it was years ago on uh, the little Southwest Mirror Machine in New Brunswick. And it uh, I, I didn't get a fish on one, but uh, I, the one of the guys I was with uh, and videoing got, got a fish on one. And so the kind of <laughs> kind of saved the video effort for me. And, and it's always had a special place in my heart. Plus, it, it, it's an interesting fly and in that, that there's a lot going on and with the deer hair body and the, you know, a, a tinsel tag and, and some floss in there, plus a hackle. There are a lot of techniques that you can use. And um, it's, it's also a fly, unfortunately, that you can mess up at the last minute. And so I have a couple of like fail safes that I built build in anyway. So I stand a chance of resurrecting it if I, if I mess up right at the end and, and, uh, oh, I know yeah, so, what you're doing. yeah, so it, interesting. I know, yeah, I know what you're going to do. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. Do you me. now? <laughs> um, I know what you're going to do. <laughs> did just out of curiosity, did in the prep for this fly, did it involve a trip to the hardware store for you, Tom? 
No, because I already had some. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> well, it's it's the same thing I'm gonna do. To, to me, it's kind of the only way. Oh, around you it. are. You, yeah, you're using yeah. my trick. You're using well, my trick. Your trick? Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 I see where we're going. Okay. So um, anyway, um, I have never fished this fly, but I am going. Uh, I am going to uh host a tv show and filming in newfoundland uh this summer so i'm definitely going to use these flies i am going to be doing the same but in the fall so yeah. uh yeah and uh that is one of the reasons i i i'm going to come clean for for wanting to do this pattern okay looking for looking forward to september yeah well I, i've often picked patterns where i needed to stock my fly box so, <laughs> so. <laughs> all right it's who's all starting so you picked who's starting why don't i start how about that all right you start i'll you just start. come right right out and say i'm starting all right you just uh, go you just go you to just it, go too. for it okay so yeah. let me get make sure i got cameras we're all looking good uh, ugly t-shirt out of there so to start size eight uh, you can go eight, ten, six. Some people tie these really big fours, uh, but uh, size eight's just kind of middle of the road, I think. And ooh, that's way out of focus. So I have the hook in my tying vise. Uh, I I do. It's not full rotary, but I, I I do like to have the ability to spin it around. In terms of a starting material. I'm actually going to start off with some green. Uh, this is Glowbrite thread or floss. It, it looks like thread, but it really, really is a floss. And uh, that wasn't included in the materials you sent me. I green floss was. Yeah, yes. but not green tying thread. Well, it, this is floss. <sighs> Just the slightest little things. Hey, I need all the edge I can get. I'm tying against the great Tim flag. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to get it started right about there. I'm going to keep going for just a little bit, Tom, if that's okay. And you've hardly started. I know. And so I'm going to go. This is small silver oval tinsel. Uh, you can go with medium if you like. It just on this size eight, it, it looked a little big to me. And all I'm going to do, it kind of like um, like Atlantic salmon fly tires do. You, you want to try to hide stuff like your tie-in point. And so I'm going to move it to the underside of the hook like that. And just go back a little ways. Just as a reference point. I try to, to start this tinsel uh, right at, at the hook barb. I, it, it's just, it's kind of arbitrary. It's just a, a point that, um, so I can be consistent between flies. Now what I've done is I've kind of counterclockwise spun my tying thread and you can see that it is in fact a floss. It flosses way out. And just to make a smooth smooth place for this tinsel to wrap tinsel can be a little fussy i i generally do one that's kind of on the hook shank like that and that helps me to jump one up onto that tying thread and that's three uh, Four. It's only supposed to be three in Atlantic Salmon pattern. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Well, five, five. Yep. You're I out. In, I, You're I believe. Out. I five believe, turns. <laughs> I believe in Newfoundland. It is five. Well, that's in Newfoundland. Well, that's where we're going, right? They do everything different there. And so then. Again, this doesn't really matter because you, you, you got that deer hair. And so there's really no reason to, to fill in uh, up to the hook return. Okay, so I'm not going to. 
just going to snip them off. And then I'm going to go back. And you can see there's just a, I can zoom into it. There's just a little kind of step down between the floss and the tinsel. So I'm going to go back and just fill in that space. As soon as I have it kind of up to level again, I'm going to spin that my bobbin counterclockwise, floss the thread out a bit, or floss the floss out a little bit. And just make it nice and smooth going in there. And stop at about the point, and I'll let Tom do his thing. Now, why don't you put your red in? Why don't you put your red in, too? Okay, well, I, I need to do another. Uh, I'll just keep going then, Tom. How about that? Yeah, just keep I going. add, I think this, gosh, I hope it was on the materials list. Yep. Whew. Pearl Crystal Flash. This is kind of subjective, whether you put the pearl crystal flash in behind the green and in front of the red or kind of after both of them. I like it kind of... Switch cameras. Right. Zoom out. I like it between the green and the red. So I've got three strands of it, and I'm just going to take a wrap here and then just pull this stuff... The forward pointing portion back and, and I'm just I'm I'm turning three strands into six okay and just use the back edge of the hook bend as a guide and then I can actually just wind forward and get rid of my green thread for the moment floss And there would be a really good time to turn it over to Tom. All right. I think I'll go, I'll go as far as the red floss on mine. So I have the same hook in the vise. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to use three different threads in this fly. And I'm going to start with six all white. And I'm going to start my thread on top of the return to close that, to close that gap just out of tradition. Because you normally do that with Atlantic salmon flies. And then I'm not fancy like Tim. I don't have, I don't have my tinsel on a bobbin. I'm just going to pull a piece of, uh, oval silver tinsel. Oval silver tinsel is hard to find these days. Nobody I know. sells it anymore. Nobody sells it. It's like, and there's good ties. stuff and good stuff and bad stuff. Some of it separates yeah. and the, the core just shines through. It's ugh. and I'm gonna take this just as Tim said because in Atlantic salmon flies we tend to. We tend to keep stuff under the hook. So I'm going to let that, I'm gonna tie that in. I'm gonna put that on the far side. And I'm gonna come back. And I like to think of it starting that tinsel as like just where the hook starts to drop over, you know, just where it starts to starts to go down. And then I'll come forward. Of course, I'm only going to take three turns of, of tinsel. So three. Uh, yeah, three. How do the fish even see just three little turns? They don't. The purpose, in fact, I'm going to go a little forward. The purpose of this tag is not for the fish it's to keep your floss from sliding off the back of the hook oh. all it's there for and then i'm going to unwind 
till I get right back to that point where the tinsel is. And then I'm going to tie that off underneath. And let it come forward a little bit. I better cut that off now. Underneath. Again, just out of... Uh, just out of habit. And I'm going to come forward. As Tim said, you don't have to get too fancy with this because it's all going to be covered up with, with deer hair. And then I'm going to take uh, about five or six strands of crystal flash. I'm not going to fold these. I'm just going to tie it in one piece and wet it. and keeping those on top you know there's a there's an old there's an old uh i won't say wives tale that's probably not politically correct anymore but there's this there's this idea that uh you have to spin deer hair over a bare hook shank, which is total, totally bogus. It is um, very bogus. Totally bogus. Yeah. You don't, you don't need to worry about that. And I'm going to, my tail is going to be a little longer. I'm going to let it extend because I tied it in at the end instead of in the middle of the floss. I'm going to let that extend a little further just to give a little flash out the back end of the fly. And then I'm going to take a piece of green floss, real floss, not that stuff Tim's using. <laughs> oh, dear. Fluorescent green. Single strand. Single strand. Single strand. I'm going to wet it, keep it from going anywhere. And then I'm going to advance the length that I want this little green tag to be, which is right about there. Camera. Uh, yeah. Could you switch cameras? Oh, Tom? camera. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's where I'm going to be. And then I'm going to. Ooh, I got a a frayed piece there. I got to be careful. Don't want to fray my floss. And then I'm going to tie this in just with a couple of nice tight turns. And then I'm going to wind back. And Tim is hoping that this floss frays on me. Give a little I'm giving a little twist. Tim is there. I can hear, I can hear him. I can hear him just saying, please fray. Please fray, floss. And then I'm going to take that last turn to cover up, cover up my thread. Although that's why I use white there so that it doesn't show as much. Now, Tim, you know, he, he didn't have to worry about it because he just, he just uses his tying thread. I'm going to tie that off. Couple of tight turns. And again, just for tradition or whatever, I'm building that up. And then I'm going to take some red floss. Tim probably uses thread. Probably. Single strand floss. Real floss. Not silk. I do have some silk floss, but I'm not going to use it because it's pretty coarse. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to advance my thread to the point where I want the red to be. Let's 
sorry, didn't switch cameras. And I'm going to tie the red floss in here. And then go back. I might go, I might actually go over that green a little bit just because I think the green's a little long. So I might, and that'll really make it almost seamless. And then tie that off. Nothing frayed. Can't believe it. And I'm going to stop there because I want to okay. see what you're going to do next. Okay. Um, let me get, uh, cameras turned on. So I am going to spool up a, another different color. Let me just zoom in for you guys here just to, to, so you get to see the, the product that I'm using. I just, I just took out the, the green that I used that, that I, can you read that right there that says floss? Mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't say thread it says floss so i'm going to use same material i'm going to uh, go after those people for uh for <laughs> misrepresentation tr truth and advertising <laughs> uh, so i'm gonna load that into a bob and get nice little bit of tension on there and then i can go back and what I'm going to do is get this just started right about there. And I need to go all the way back and over that green. And I've learned my lesson on this one. Always want to check the far side to make sure that there isn't any green poking through a uh, little again counterclockwise spin of the bobbin will floss out that floss and it's an exaggerated little bump there make sure everything is covered up nicely good to go and then i can just do a little uh, counterclockwise spin and whip finish. That's all I need for this red floss. And get rid of that. Should I keep going, Tom? That was a short step. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Next, I know I'm changing threads a lot here. This is, is actually a um, 100 denier gel spun. I, I mean, you can use just white tying thread, 140 denier, but uh, I, I chose chosen the, the gel spun pretty pretty much because of the the uh, the deer body here. Just just to have that extra assurance uh, that you're not going to break break the thread. I apologize if that wasn't on the list, Tom. No, it was, no. It was on the list. It, yeah, it's gel spun. Okay. Yeah. Now here too, yeah. just just like Tom did, I am just because I'm going to close down that that return uh, on the eye, the metal, and just because I really even with really good tying scissors, the gel spun can be a royal pain. It's just so much easier with a a, a razor blade to cut it than it is to snip it with your tying thread. And I'm going to go back right in to about there with my tying thread. Uh, next thing, I'll do it real quick, is brown hackle. And I kind of know where these guys are. Size 8 hook, I'm going to use, I'm actually going to measure it on my hackle gauge. 
uh, like a size 10, 10 hackle feather. Generally looks pretty good. We'll go with that. That might be a little small. It's kind of variable because, you know, you're, you're going to be digging into the uh, digging into that spun deer hair body and how far you dig in, it, it, it kind of changes. Um, the other thing here, too, is learn my lesson the hard way with this one. You, you don't want to be down in the thick part of the stem. Uh, it has a tendency to, to, to break, and that's not good. And I am just to kind of cheat a little bit, make sure I have the shiny side of the feather facing me. I'm going to take just a few more fibers off of that, that top edge. Actually, before I tie this in, I want to do one little thing that I think is kind of critical. And <clears throat> I, I know I can't use the UV Cure resins anymore, or I'd use it here. Uh, just I developed a sensitivity. I think we talked about that before. Um, but this stuff, it, it's from Sally Hansen. It's called Insta Dry, and it, it kind of kind of can save you uh, if, if, for instance, you can't use UV Cure resin. It 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 dries almost instantly. And the reason I'm going to do this here is, particularly on the red, just a little drop and on the bottom is I don't want this stuff unraveling. I know I got it on there really tight, but more importantly, when I go to trim the, the deer hair, that floss right there is so vulnerable. Uh, one little cut and it, it just wants to fray really, really bad. So this is sort of an insurance policy. And you can see it, it sinks in and dries super, super quick. Is that a new product? I've never seen you use that, Sally Hansen. I, it's I, I um, have, I, I, I've had it for a while, mm -hmm. and the InstaDry, but mm -hmm. I, I have just been frantically trying to find a replacement for UV Cure Resin, and, and this is the best I've come up with so far, be, mainly because it dries so quickly. So it's like a quick, it's like a quick dry head cement, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, huh. And it uh, really works wonders. I'm going to try to get this tied in. I'm hoping you, that that's... And you're tying that hackle in butt first, huh? Butt first, yes. Okay. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons for um, watching out for the really thick part of the stem because when, when you make that turn here, uh, I've had the stem break, and it's a mm. real bummer. Uh, because then you're you're kind of lost. You've already got the deer hair body done. I'm going to end with my tying thread, not quite to the red, just just a little in front of that red. And I think that's a good place to stop. You're not going to do anything else right now. Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you to do something else right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First thing I'm going to do is somebody said my fly looked messy. I'm going to clean this up, which is pretty easy. Still using that white 6 0 thread. And I am going to use uh, a saddle hackle instead of um, instead of a neck hackle that Tim used. Doesn't matter. Um, and I'm looking for a nice long one. And I like uh, like Tim. I like my uh, I like the hackle not too long uh, in in this fly. I don't, I don't like it sticking way out. I just like a little bit of little bit of uh, breaking of the surface tension there. So I'm going to just look for, these are kind of small, but, and saddle hackles generally have only one or two sizes on them, as, as you know, those of you who've used saddle hackles have realized, there's one that looks all right. Now that one, let me look for a little bigger one. Here's one. 
That one's a little longer. Okay, so I'm going to take this big long saddle heckle, and I don't need I don't need all of that, so I'm going to just cut it here, and then I am going to I'm going to tie mine in tip first. I know I'm messing with fire, but Whoa. I'm going to stroke I'm going to stroke these the first part of it back and leave myself a long tip. And then I'm going to I'm going to grab that hackle, pull those fibers back, and I'm going to tie it in. And I'm going to go all the way forward because I do not want this to slip out when I'm uh, when I'm tying my deer hair. Trim this out of the way. And then I am going to, you know what's coming, Tim. <laughs> I do. I'm going to take my famous painter's tape and I'm going to line it right up with the red. And I'm going to pull that down. So that's going to protect my hackle and... My floss. Where did you get that skinny tape. painter's tape? It's called a pair of scissors. Oh, okay. Uh, make sure that it's in the right place. Like, yep, okay. And then I'm going to whip finish. Three turns is fine here because this is going to be all covered up. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't think so. And then I'm going to take, oops, I'm going to take my uh, gel spun polyester. I think this is actually 150 denier, but yeah, it doesn't matter. You want something strong for, uh, for tying deer hair in because you really want to put some pressure on here. And then I am going to attach this. doesn't matter where. And... Take my razor blade, just like Mr. Flagler. Cut it. Come right back to that base there. And I think I'm done here. Okay. For now. Because I, I do have one little step that I want to get taken care of. Okay. Before I move on. Um, okay. And oddly Painter's enough. Tape. Yep. <laughs> you just went to black. Yeah. Black. I did? Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in here so we can see that. And then I am going to, I didn't cut mine. <gasps> you have painter's tape. I always have painter's tape, Tom. Come on. I've never and seen you use painter's tape before. You I got that have from it, me. I even have it on a little spool. And what I like to do anyway is I like to fold in the ends. I figures you'd have some clever little <laughs> thing. Just so they're they're easier to separate. Oh, good idea. And then I go right to the edge of the red. I figures you would have some innovation on the painter's tape. <laughs> well, and, and for those guys out there that, that think painter's tape is, is a luxury or maybe isn't needed, I am telling you, on this fly, yeah, it, it's all but essential. I, I don't really know how you'd pull it off without it. I honestly thought that you were going to do that trick where you tie it, where you 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 bring the thread back through the body and then you tie the hackle in at the front and then I thought you were going to do that trick. I I on my test I, subjects I I, yeah. I that that's the way I want to tie it badly. Hmm. Um yeah. and then reinforce the um the hackle stem by winding the the hmm. gel spun forward 
and yeah. cross wrapping yeah. over the hackle stem. But there are some real pitfalls with doing that. Namely, that, that oftentimes, even if you really cord up the gel spun thread, it kind of wants to sit on top of the, the deer hair. And so you can see little things of white gel spun and that not, it just ruins the, the, the look of the fly. So, um, but yeah, you, certainly there, there are ways to do it where you can tie in the hackle at the front after you've trimmed the body. Right. Uh, yeah. Just I, I kind of landed back with this this way. Okay. Uh, should I keep going or what do you want to do? We're we're kind of at the same spot. I think we're both about to spin some deer hair. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Um, I'm going to stick with the uh, that white gel spun again. I have it right right back there by the the painter's tape and this stuff i don't know why i mean the, like green deer hair used to be omnipresent and it took me a while to to get hold of some of the appropriate color green deer hmm. this is deer belly hair hmm. um and so I, I think you could on, on a bug this small, and we're going to be trimming this really, really short. This isn't it says it's olive, but to me that's a bright green, uh, almost a Highlander green. Um, you could get away with body hair, but belly hair just has got a nice, nice bit of flair to it. And in terms of amount, again, just so hard to tell. Um, wh whatever that is, uh, pencils diameter i don't know i kind of have the same procedure i'll make a mess of my desk here i snip that off square spin it around and then i like to snip the tips off and then kind of in the classic i guess deer hair spinning use these three fingers and go like that to hold the hair makes it real hard to hit the button on my switcher but about the <laughs> midpoint <laughs> lay it against the near side of the hook one wrap and then on the second wrap i'm just going to pull tight and let it go and it's you'll see it's going to want to spin around and kind of do the the 360 and i i keep on taking turns until it stops spinning and then i'll pull everything back and relocate my thread to in front of it. I also have a little, uh, you can use a whole bunch of things, but this is just a gutted um, plunger style hackle plier. And I can use that kind of like you'd use a half hitch tool almost. And force it back sort of hair packer style and at the same time, keep those wraps in really tight. Yeah, some people need do... those crutches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do one more clump. Go ahead and clump it all. Just because of that snarky last comment. Um, Go ahead, clump it all. Just clump, clump it all. Clump, just just clump race all it out of eye. everybody in the class. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't given you enough grief today. I don't know. I, I yeah, yeah I, I'm... What's the deal, Tom? I don't know. Well, um, you haven't I'm, given me any either. What, yeah. what, what, what's going on here? So again, kind of that, that three-fingered grip. And same deal once. And then on the second one, just pull and let it spin. And, and you guys can see that that is certainly not on uh, any kind of a bare hook shank. That's got thread all over it. I think I just knocked myself out of focus. No, you're good. Yeah? Yeah, you're good. Oh, there we go. We'll go a little wider next time. I think one more, one more big boy, and uh, I'm good to go. I don't want to get too far out on the eye. that 
that's looking looking pretty good a little little push from my crutch <laughs> well you know okay. at your at your age at your age you need those, <laughs> you need those those uh aids uh, to help your dexterity and i am gonna just get rid of my little front or back to front whip finish on there pull that real tight look for my razor blade and i'm ready to hand it over to you okay time for me to spin huh yep all right well i have some deer hair as well oops Big long piece of green deer hair. Wow! And that looks primo. like a primo. That's, that's a, primo a primo strip, primo, isn't it? Primo strip <sighs> from Wapsie. Yeah. Man. And I'm gonna cut. This is more than a pencil. That's all right. And I like to make the first one pretty short because you're gonna trim it away anyways. So I've got this little little bunch of deer here and then i noticed that it's funny you you come in at a different angle with your deer hair, so i come in this way i don't think it matters one turn make sure you got it two turns start to flare third turn spin it keep going in the same spot until it stops moving and then bring your thread through the clump push it back i don't have much for fingernails but i think i got enough there and then i like to put a drop of head cement in here there's a couple of reasons that i don't use super glue here um well, the main reason is that when I wind my hackle through there, not today because we're going to be going slowly, but um, if I'm tying this at a, at a regular speed, that he that head cement will still be a little wet when I run my hackle through there, and the hackle stem will stick to the will stick inside that head cement because it takes a little bit longer to dry than super glue. And I'm going to do the same thing here. One, two, and three. And don't be afraid to put a lot of pressure on this. Everybody is so scared of working with deer hair. But once you once you get the hang of it, it, it is really it is really fun and it's pretty easy. Well, I think one of the problems is we we get so critical of ourselves with it, you know, and it, yeah. it's and you don't really need to be that critical. Um, no, especially with something like this, where the whole thing is just going to get trimmed down to almost nothing. Yeah, and I'm probably going to put two more bunches on here. Oops, I went back a little bit. And you can also wiggle your thread a little bit when you get in there. Hmm, should I risk one more bunch? Yeah, I'm going to oh, yeah. put one more. Yeah, there's uh, a ton of, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going <laughs> to listen to you. <laughs> Look at all that room. <laughs> like a pencil width, I think. Should really just fill that up nice. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Oh, I'm not gonna listen to you. I'm not gonna listen to you. That's too much. That's better. Oh boy, hope I didn't make a mistake here. 
grind it in there. Oh, yeah, plenty of room. Tons of room. If I had that, if I had that secret, if I had that secret device that you have, I could really, I could really pack it in there, but I think it's pretty well packed. And then I'm going to whip finish. And you can be pretty sloppy on your whip finish here because it's going to be all covered up. Plus, there's head cement there. So just to secure it. I don't even care if I... No, I better not do that. I'm going to get points taken off if I do that. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, we can hope. Uh. <laughs> I don't want to... I don't want to I get blind like, stick. Yes. <laughs> Trap that beer here. Oh, scissors. And then I'm just going to come in and just trim those before I start my big trimming. Okay. I'm going to back up a bit, too. It looks like I'm really... Looks like I'm really... Gonna back up for the trimming. Okay. Your turn. Okay. I'll start trimming here. Um, Anyway, my my first step when I'm trimming is to just get everything pulled forward. It, it'll go. I mean, you, you just kind of have to get get mean with that deer hair, but pull it so it's all perpendicular both front and back it's it's surprising how how you can actually do that it really really wants to to bend where you want it to bend I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit more and again th this is i mean we're going to trim it down to a nub so it, it's kind of hard to to actually trim too much for a couple reasons, I like going in this way first. And just get rid of anything big. Don't I at, at this stage, it's almost whew, other than cutting off your hackle feather. <laughs> you would have loved that, wouldn't you, Tom? Oh um, man. I could that only hope. that would have just been too good to be true. <laughs> I could only hope to. Uh, yeah. And so what I'm doing here is just kind of making a, a cylinder. And again, it's going to be in the end. I, I like these things really, really skinny. Well, you could always cut into your tying thread. By going yeah. too skinny. Yeah, by going too skinny. Hopefully that uh -huh. won't happen. Yeah. Oh, cut cut a little cut a little deeper there, Tim. Yeah, as with anything deer here, you just you gotta gotta know when to stop cutting. Yeah. Another little tip for you guys, and this is kind of so you have it trimmed like this, right? You you think you're 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 golden, you're gonna taper the ends, but go like this and rough it up with your fingers. Cause there's always some like mutant little hair that wants to pop out of nowhere at the end after you wrap your hackle. And you just want to make sure that they're none of them kind of tucked in. I didn't have many on that one, but I see a couple. You got a couple? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then the, the the fine touches. The other thing you want to watch out for, and I got a little bit of it here. I don't want that white tying thread 
shining through. And so you can kind of trim. And push oh, this. Oh, curb blades. Curb blades. Scissors. Yeah, these are nice too. Interesting. Yeah. Nice fresh tying scissors. Nothing better. Nothing better. But unfortunately, after a dozen deer hair flies, they're not going to be so nice anymore. No, and there's no way to resharpen scissors, is there? Unless no, you're I, I really haven't figured anything out i can't do it i can sharpen knives really yeah and well, that I, I cannot sharpen scissors no and that that internet or tiktok thing with snipping tin foil doesn't work for no, anything no, no that's kind of a joke anyway you just before you take that tape off and do do the final trimming just just kind of make sure that everything you know you're as far along as you could possibly be i am gonna grab a double-edged razor blade here and this will freak a lot of people out i sorry it looks dangerous i've practiced it quite a bit i like to break it in half and set one aside and that that way i i'm not wasting as many I know which which has been used and which hasn't. Which edge? I usually mark the edge. I usually mark, mark the edge, the edge mm -hmm. I use with a with a permanent marker. Yeah. And here is another reason why I put that that Sally Hansen instant dry. Even if I'm super super careful here, one little nick with this blade on that on the thread or on the floss that's beneath there and it, if it was just bare it, it it just teases it up and it's horrible um again you can kind of wreck the whole fly in a in very short order and i'm just gonna do a little more trimming here and get it kind of cigar shaped and guys i mean this is we we can i can go all day here to get it perfect <laughs> if I to. that's a little little big for me i i do like them small but I want to keep cutting maybe you'll cut into yeah, your time yeah, maybe something good will happen yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's an evil laugh you got there man oh man you don't know the half of it okay now i'm gonna stop there for the moment carefully remove my tape and last little bit but see what I mean? Even even just a nick with the tip of those tying scissors on that floss, if it if I didn't have something on it, would would really just it just looks ugly. Phrase and Ooh, feeling fairly good about that. Looks good. I think I'm ready for you to start start trimming start trimming okay so one thing i do when after i've uh after i've spun my body is sometimes i'll take one of these finger brushes which you can use for stroking ep fibers and stuff like that and um and just kind of same thing that Tim did with his fingers, but this may grab any little deer hairs that have gotten bound under. I 
And then just like Tim, I will try to stroke these up. And I like to come in first. Uh, I'm not sure why. I like to come in right up against that painter's tape and get get the back end of it done first or get some of that back end done. So I'm just going around here. And I can use the painter's tape as a guide. Just put my scissors right up against it. Just to get that, just to clean up that area around the around the uh, back end there kind of hard to get in here with the camera the way i normally would want to do it held your scissors at an angle a little bit i'm not going to be able to get in there too well but just to get that stuff out of the way back there and then then i'll start to you know, do the rough cut, just like Tim did, go around in a cylinder, starting to form that cigar shape. I hate blowing on this near the camera, but yeah, oh, God, it went all over. <laughs> it went all over the place. And then I'll take my razor blade and start to shape my cigar. What are you snickering at? <laughs> That's looking about right. And as Tim and I are always saying, you could go on forever with this stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, I've watched a couple guys who, who I mean, I can consider really, I mean, who tie a lot of these, a lot of bugs like, like these and bombers. And uh -huh. nobody is like especially fast at it either. No, you know I mean, it, it's yeah. They, yeah. They're more practiced and everything, but I've never really seen anybody that just like whips through yeah. uh, carving deer hair. Uh, yeah. It takes a while. It, I mean, t if you want yeah. it to look good, it takes a while. If you don't care, the fish don't certainly don't care. Yeah. And then I'm going to remove my painter's tape. And if I had been smart, like Mr. Flagler, I would have uh, folded over those ends. But since, I wasn't smart like Mr. Flagler. I have to come in with my dubbing needle and peel it off. Next time I'll know better. You just you're just hoping I break that hackle, aren't you? <laughs> it's an all dream. <laughs> and then oh 
God, I could keep going, but I'm not gonna. Boy. No, I'm not gonna go any further. <laughs> I see one big one in the back though. You, you gotta get rid of it. It will haunt you. Oh God. Yeah. Thank you. There's also that brown one that's sticking back there. You might want to give that a little trim yeah. too. Yeah, that big brown one. Yeah, I'll take care of that. <laughs> I can see that I'm up. I kind of went over my, oh, this is dangerous. This is really dangerous, but I'm going to do it anyways. What the hell? All right. Your turn. My turn. Mm -hmm. Cameras on. My, what is it? One, one, two, three, four. I guess that's only four. Five. Yeah. Fifth spooled item. Two, two, two flosses, a tinsel, and gel spun, and then just black. This is this is ten aught uh, thread. Um, nice and strong but but still fairly small and so what i'm going to do is get that started and cover up all that white gel spun don't want that white shining through and then just going to get my hackle feather again i that little and little space of bare stem make sure that it wraps correctly and i'm going to really kind of push this stem down and you can see it go, actually going in four or five turns in the deer hair yeah, that's going to protect the stem. The stem, yeah. You really want to bury it down in there if you can. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take some nice, nice tight wraps there. And I'm kind of feeling a little lucky here today. <laughs> Joan apparently thinks that that's a mistake. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to take that and bust it, bust it off. Get everything swept back. All looking pretty good. And then just kind of taper the, taper the deer hair down into a, a neat little head on the fly. Again, I've gotten, I know I got points taken off for this on the Undertaker, but I really like to leave just a little space right there, kind of traditional um, for a riffling hitch or, or whatever. Up to you. Back to front whip finish. Oh, looking pretty good, I think. And then just regular Sally Hansen hard as nails. I'm going to saturate all the way around. Let her dry, and that's that's about it for me. Okay. Okay. 
All right. So the reason that I tied mine in by the tip is I, I like the looks of the hackle streaming back. Um, I like to fold it. And by tying it in by the tip, it's going to it's going to make that hackle stream back. Just slanting back just a little bit. Oh my God. I forgot to put my tying thread on there. <laughs> Luckily it stayed there. So I'm I'm gonna find my hair. <laughs> that was a rookie move. So I know you're laughing, Flagler. I can hear you laughing. All right. Luckily, my hackle stayed in the... Uh... You didn't see that. No, I didn't. <laughs> And then maybe an extra turn in front. And Atlantic salmon flies typically, they like to see kind of a, a blunt head. So I used a little bit thicker thread there. To get that more of that blunt headed look. Gorgie, where did you come from, Hackle Fiber? And thank God. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. <laughs> it was finished. <laughs> And I'm not going to put Sally Hansen's on there. I'm going to put real head cement. Real head cement on there. Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't do nail polish. Okay. Well, you didn't realize that I was going to put a second coat on now, did you? Because no, you're not putting a second coat on. I, I I intended to. I had to wait to, till the Sally Hansen dried. I'm just kidding. See, real head cement doesn't need second coats. All right. Green machine. Green machine. Green machine. Done. You sure can pick them. Well, we, we both need them, right? Yeah, okay. and I can't believe neither of us made a big mistake. Yeah. Because this pattern is rife for oh, it, yeah. big I mistakes. Mean, any number of places at all. Particularly, once again, folks, with a big old camera between you and the fly does not make it any easier. And both Tom and I have to contend with that. Julia, are we ready for the vote? We got to do our spin, right? Our... Yeah. Julia, there you are. Hi. Yes, we are. People... I have it ready. Okay. okay. We're going to zoom, zoom out just a little, Tom. If I'm going to take my mug out. <laughs> zoom out. Okay. Oh, and I'll zoom in then. My, I, my zooming means moving my tripod. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and I gotta oh, gotta move out a little more. How's that? That looks pretty good. All 
And they look pretty close, don't they? Yeah, they, they do. I think maybe it comes down to just a kind of personal choices to overall, you know, what, what people would want to see an overall look in a green machine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's no right or wrong way to tie a green machine because it imitates no. absolutely nothing. Like nothing, yeah. It makes a little <laughs> motorboat wake, and that's about it. <laughs> Other than that, I think you're good to go. Yeah. I don't know, Tom. I don't know about you, but I, I'm uh, I, I'm pretty happy with the way mine actually turned out. Um, like you said, there there's so many places for problems on this fly, and um, yeah, I could I'm have actually, uh, I'm actually I could have spent lucky. more time trimming that deer hair body, but yeah, but again, how much do you do before it's too much? You know. Yeah, I think uh, the the ability to stop yourself from trimming is far more important than. Yeah. Am I still supposed to spin? Still supposed yep. to be spinning here. Wow, we got some in Spanish. Okay, I think we have a winner. Okay, it Julia. Close. It was pretty close, though. They both look really good, y'all. And, and Thank you, Julia. The audience, they do. Uh, just for the audience awareness, though, I really appreciate everyone giving their feedback in the comments, but the way that we measure it is through the link I put in. So make sure you vote there if you haven't yet. But as of right now, and it's been going pretty steadily, the winner is Tim Flagler. Yay! Congratulations. But well, Tom, hats you. hats off on that one. I I uh I like the way yours looks. I like the way mine looks. Um uh, I think it could have gone either way, but man, that that was a pretty good tie off there, young man. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun. That was a fun one. Yeah. yeah things could have gone south in a hurry. Yeah. Uh, but fortunately, no. Ah, the thrill of victory. So, okay. Sure well, it is 10 after 4. We went over wow. our allotted time. Uh, well, I want to thank I want to thank everyone for your support for your great right. comments. No, I don't want to thank you for your support. You didn't vote for me, but uh, no, you. Thank you for you, hanging uh, in there, guys. Yeah, everybody. Thank you for hanging yeah. in there. Um, hope some of you tied along with us. I know a lot of you said you didn't don't have any use for salmon flies, but this this would catch bass. This would yep. catch bluegills. <laughs> you don't need to. You don't need to do this to catch bluegills, but it would work. So. Um, well, and, and I can tell you where I, uh, Tom said at the beginning, I was just down in Argentina where I was in Patagonia. We were, we were fishing, uh, waking flies on the surface for, for trophy brook trout. And mm. they, they would have leaped all, maybe a bigger size than this, but they, they would have been all over a green machine. Mm. Uh, no, no doubt. So no, yeah, not just Atlantic salmon. All right. Guys, well, thank, thank you everyone. You. For tuning in, Tim and I will be back in a month or so. I don't think we have a date, and I have some vacation in June, and uh, Tim, you probably are on the road a bit, so we'll have to figure out a figure out a, a Monday uh, in June to do this. Well, then, and you have and to it's figure my out a fly. Yeah, it's my turn to pick. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> Make it a good well, one. Yeah, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your great questions. And um, we'll see you in about a month. And I will be here. I won't be here next Monday because I'm going to be out of town, but I'll be here the following Monday. I'm going to tie one of my own patterns, uh, the uh, the wire mayfly nymph. I have, um, I have about a dozen patterns now 
through Fulling Mill and on the on the Orvis website of my personal variations of patterns. Um, so uh, you can you can see the wire mayfly there, and um, we'll be tying that one fairly fairly straightforward nymph. But um, thanks again, and um, we'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, thank you, everybody.